Hello and welcome back to another episode of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm your host, Shay Wheat, founder of Grace and Ease Productions. And I have somebody really special to share with you today. Um, you're going to love her. I already love her. We've only been chatting for, you know, probably 10 minutes or so. And I wish she lived closer. I'll just tell you that. <laughs> so I'm sharing with you today the amazing Mel Baumont. Now, hopefully I got it right that time, but we can just call her Mel B. And she is really Australia's only ex-Scottish Latin dancing, Israel street fighting mindset mentor. Do you see why I love her already? <laughs> so as an award-winning thought leader of empathic leadership and quantum healing, she's been featured in Yahoo and Thrive Global. Now today, Mel B is going to share with her, share her knowledge with us of her paradigm shifting models and hacks to explore why some empaths have smooth sailing while others find themselves a bit shipwrecked. So get ready for this mind-altering insights, grab your notepad, and help me welcome to the Creating Powerful Impact stage, Mel B. What's up, Mel? Thank you. <laughs> Who are you? I'm fabulous. It's a bit, it's a bit uh, cool over here in Australia, which some people just, it blows their mind. But yes, it's coming yeah. into winter here. It's, which is so mind blowing to me because here in the States, we're going into summer, right? And so, but I guess it makes sense. We're a little bit flip flop and, you know, you're in the future and I think so, right? You're in the future and I'm in the past right now. Is that how that works? <laughs> oh, no, I'm in the moment, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> well, I'm super excited to connect with you today. Um, I know that you are an empath expert. What I would love for you to share with us um, is like, what is an empathy expert? What does that mean? What does that look like? Share, share the goods with us. Cool. So there's a couple of different definitions. And one of the biggest things that I love people to understand first is there's a big difference between being empathic, having empathy versus being an empath. Mm. Okay. for those who are like what so being of empathetic nature being compassionate towards another is a choice it's a trait mm -hmm. and it's kind of putting yourself in their shoes so you're feeling with someone you're considering what it would be like for that experience to be in your world so think of it like compassion, whereas being an empath is you're literally feeling the thing with them. You are experiencing their emotions at the same time, not, not kind of like being in the same presence, actually experiencing in your body the same emotions. So that's the key thing that I help people understand the difference. And then, well, what does that mean? So right. the definition is the first place I like to start. Okay. And then what does that mean? <laughs> I wasn't sure if you're going to ask that. Um, <laughs> so what it means is we are all born with gifts and traits and skills and talents. And so how I kind of start that kind of thinking, because all, all I want to do is just help people think differently, is we come across like child geniuses and talents. So kids that I like the tennis stars who just know, their body just knows how to hit a ball, whereas other kids, it can take me 10, 20 years to and never master that hand coordination. And then you've got like the geniuses of um, music who can play music without training way before the average understanding is even there to comprehend what they're playing. So we're born with gifts and talents. And the same happens with empathic traits. Now, the term for these are Claire gifts. Now, there are at least nine, depends on where you come from. Different schools of thoughts have different numbers. I focus in on nine of the, the most common ones. And those I like to kind of explain as being, if those of us are old enough to remember a radio dial, 
but remember like just a dial of anything right whether it's yeah. air Turning fryer up the whatever. volume in the car right <laughs> yes and so it you can kind of tune into different frequencies you can dial up you can turn the volume up so that's kind of what i help people to comprehend these different talents now some of us have way stronger of the clear gifts than others the most common one that people kind of get is clairsentience, which is feeling on your skin. Goosebumps. Right. Sort of a gut instinct. So some of them have one or two clairs, but that that kind of, oh, I got goosebumps. People are now kind of going, well, that's something. That's a sensation that comes from nowhere or rather comes from within. So those so senses- If we stick with that real quick, Like, so last week I was, I was going through my list and there were people that I was like following up with in business. And I'm like, okay, I need to reach out to so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so today. Right. And so, you know, I go throughout my day and then I, you know, finally get to the point where I'm, you know, sending them a text or I'm I'm picking up the phone and they're like, how did you know I was thinking about you earlier today? Right. So what is, what is that kind of thing? Because I had one of those moments and then I was like, oh my gosh. And I got goosebumps. Yeah. So that's a couple of different ones. It could be clear sentience, uh, which is the goosebumps. It could be clear cognizance, which is the gut infinct instinct and the feeling. Um, so twins have a lot of cl- clear cognizance where they're connecting with something beyond intellect, mm-hmm. beyond the tangible senses on and about our body. Um, and then it can be clear intelligence where you just know. So some yeah. of these kind of come in pairings. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, clear, uh, clear vision um, is where you get kind of flashes of pictures about something. So people kind of like I see into the future. I had a, f- a, f- a flash of inspiration. So that's a clear sense. And often they come in twos and threes. You, if you've got one, you generally ha- will have more than one. Um, so it's tuning and playing with these clear senses and not making them wrong because this science proven, this isn't just woo-woo, airy-fairy fluff stuff out there. Sci- my favorite book, if you ever are on the fence about any of this stuff, uh, The Biology of Belief. There's 200, I think it's 23 or 26 studies that he summarizes and references he explored all of these different studies into not just the clear senses but what empathy is and how the spiritual epigenetics and all of this stuff of this alternative world of this alternative thinking of this alternative whatever alternative you want to give it Mm -hmm. most of it's been proven and one of my favorite quotes from the book and i can't remember who is like some famous professor doctor says we're no longer trying to study if it's a thing that's been proven now what we're studying is how can we amplify what circumstances does it happen how can we make it happen so that we can leverage amplify and understand it on a deeper level so it's no longer that this is woo it's what makes this happen and that's the really cool thing a bridging between this gap of tangible and practical and logical and s- strategic right and so, so I'm, I'm curious like okay one I want to know how do we turn it up right <laughs> or if it's really up high how do we turn it down <laughs> right so both gamuts of that um so uh, uh, let's start there how how do we how do we start playing with it? How do we start turning it up or turning it down and you know being more aware of of it showing up in our space and or turning it down a little bit if it's way too in our face? Yeah, that's that's the key to what I call self-mastery. Let me again take a back step to educate something. If you're a clear empath, which is feeling into other people's stuff. First, we need to understand what's our own and what is coming from external. So let me give an example of um, when I first learned about this stuff for myself. 
don't have a coffee before you go on an interview you get a hick in your throat um that's the, not the lesson <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I was networking um and that for itself for many empaths is like oh that's so scary yeah. we'll park that I was having uh it was a networking lunch there was a three-course meal and it was the break between um the entree and the main and I just had this nauseous, like, I literally thought I was going to throw up. And I was speaking to a kind of loose associate I met a couple of times and having a chat. And I couldn't, I couldn't concentrate on what she was saying. And one of my biggest things is being present in the moment with someone. And I'm just like, honey, I just got to stop you. I need to go and throw up. I'm just, excuse me. And she went, do you feel nauseous? And I was like, yeah. And she went, no, 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 that's mine. Um, yeah. Like, what? What are you talking about? She went, mm -hmm. no, 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 that's me. I'm waiting for this really big bank loan to come through for this um, deal that I'm working on. And as she said that, the nausea passed mm. instantly. Mm. I was already a coach for about four or five years. No, three or four years. And I was kind of like, what just happened? Like, mm -hmm. blew my mind she knew what it was so led me down the path of studying what being an empath is that's when i understood the difference between having empathy and being an empath so to get back to you how do you control it to dial it up and dial it down first you have to understand i thought i suffered from anxiety mild anxiety all my life hmm. Then I realized I was feeling other people's nerves and tension and excitement. I was just feeling stuff that wasn't my own. So as soon as I acknowledged that I am empathic, then the, the, the playing begins of what's mine, what's others. Mm -hmm. When we walk into a room and we feel tension, we know something's going down, some, some arguments taking place or Something's not being said. There's an elephant in the room. All of these things. We know that happens. I'm able to just, sh what, what I call shield up. Nope. Not available to pick up these frequencies. They're not mine. I'm not buying into this stuff. Your argument, whatever's happening over here, I can help. I can empathize, but I'm not going to be empathic and feel it with you. I don't need to experience it to understand it. Mm-hmm. So that's the first, the first part is to understand what's coming from within, which sometimes our ego, our fears are coming up and we need to master those. Mm -hmm. so that's the whole container here. What are we feeling from outside? And I hinted at it there, shields. Play with your imagination. Bubble your imagination. Up, right? Just like put a, put a bubble around you, so to speak. Yes. Bubble, cloaks, shields, walls. So one of my favorite things to, when I first started experimenting with this, networking events, like big events, mm -hmm. there's always somebody that we don't really kind of gel with, right? There's always one person, not our people. Right. Sometimes they're the ones who are sucking us off. Um, Pulling your energy away energy, from you, like, right? Like an energy vampire type of person. Energy vampires. And so that we've got those people who are just like, oh, I don't have the energy for them today. What it means is I don't have spare energy to give to them. So I like I think of myself like a Xena warrior. I have been in a past life, which makes it a whole lot easier. So I just literally have my big ass shield, my big shield. I'm just like shield. And what happens when you do that or your cloak or your wall of uh, your cloak of invisibility or your bubble, when you put that up, it happens every time now. They kind of see me and I'm like, oh, shield. They come up and they veer away. It's so fun to watch. And I'm like, worked again. That is fun. <laughs> so how do you dial it up, protect yourself? Play with your imagination. Mm. Even if you don't believe in it, where's the harm in playing with your life? Mm. I love that. Where's the harm in playing with your life? Yeah. That's so fun. It if we continue along this thread a little bit more, how, like, could you ex explain to us how we can really start incorporating this more into like our business life and our business world and, and playing with it? Yeah. My favorite question. Thank you. 
once you have kind of start to discern the difference, then it's trusting yourself and your senses. So for example, uh, because I mainly hang out with entrepreneurs, so that kind of networking is, is the world I play in. Um, <clears throat> If I'm having a conversation with someone and, and maybe they want to work with me, uh, they want to partner with me, which is basically the biggest, my clients are other coaches that I come in and support them with their clients and their clients' mindsets. So if they're looking to partner with me, I'm feeling and allowing myself to be open to them. And I'm sensing and I'm allowing my energies to intertwine with their energies and this is this is how you know how far you need to be what's the distance between you and someone else that you feel comfortable in allow them like two inches within that that's how you get to really feel their energy and trust if you're an empathic clear empath a clear empath what are you feeling? Are you feeling safe? Are you feeling resonance? Are you feeling comfortable? You're like, oh my Lord, we are, we're being besties. Like you just click with someone. Trust that connection. That is like to like. They're the people you partner with. They're the dream client energies. None of this, who are your target market, blah, blah, blah. Who do you resonate with? I have my target. I'm sorry, all the coaches, but who do you resonate they don't have to have all these other criteria. You just gel with one another energy. The other thing is um, the red flags. If you get a prickle, discomfort, warning flags in any of your senses, if you get the goosebumps and you feel that resonance, you say something like, oh, we should talk, we should do something together, you get the goosebumps, you know that's your yes. But if you get something else, it's just a bit sticky. The words catch in your throat. Something else distracts you whilst you're having that conversation. That is a very subtle, this is not a right fit. This is two magnets that are being repelled. They're not being drawn together. That You know that kind of invisible barrier of two magnets? That's your very subtle. And that's another really important thing today. These are suggestions. Mm. Ego makes demands and, you know, is bossy. <laughs> True. Our, our intuitive wisdom is always a choice. Do you want to experiment with this possibility? This could be a really good path. It's so true. Like, I mean, I, I'm sure we've all had the clients where we're like, I don't know, something feels a little off, but to be honest, I need the cash flow, right? And so you say yes. And then later down the road, you're like, uh, yeah, that's why I should have said no. And now I'm paying for it. So great. So the key in that moment of realization is to acknowledge it because then you're going back to your subconscious and saying, I actually did hear you. Mm. I, I, I got your message and I'm sorry I ignored it. Now I understand what that sensation feeling experience was and I will pay attention next time. For it's sure. like having a little angel literally walking with you and then just flipping it away all the time. Every time she's like, hey, that's a good one over there. Go there. And you're just like, not interested in what you got to say. Mm -hmm. When we consider like that's our wisdom and our wisdom's like, got so much patience for us it's always got our best interest and in going okay I'll tell her next time let's see if she pays attention next time mm -hmm. <laughs> so but that's that's paying attention to the times you didn't and forgiving yourself going oh darn it yeah so what I'm hearing you saying is like definitely trust that intuitive knowledge that's coming up for you and listen to it. And when you don't listen to it, acknowledge it and say, okay, I understand what that means now. Thank you so much. I'll listen next time. Um, is there, is there anything else around that? That's kind of like, you know, how do we avoid procrastination or distraction or, you know, outside influences? Like, 
when those kind of things come in into our space, are they really us procrastinating or is it really that intuitive knowledge? Is it I'm bored, so now I'm looking around and maybe is it depends on the situation? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. <laughs> the answer is yes. All of the combinations. Okay. So let me let me help you with that a little. Um, I have 12 projects on the go at the moment. I have a lot of fingers and different pies and I love variety as most humans do. How do I manage and master focus on each of those things? Sometimes it's timeline driven and we just have to get it done. Mm -hmm. And then there's other times like, I've got to do this in the next three days and learning when you're avoiding and we'll get into fears in a second. And when is just not the right time for that wisdom to come through or that uh, flow of information to land within our own intellect. So I know I do avoid writing articles because I, I apply myself fully. Articles are very important to me and they require a bit more effort. And sometimes I just can't be arsed with them. Right. And so I know when I'm procrastinating versus I don't even know where I'm, what I'm going to talk about, even though I might have the concept of what the piece is about. It's like, pff, I don't know where this is going. There's a very difference between I know what I should be doing and I'm avoiding it versus I just don't have any wisdom like about the thing. Yeah, it's just fine. Now, that's not to say you can't research. And if you feel in the mood, it's like, oh, I've got to write this article. What am I going to do? It's very, very subtle. The differences between avoidance and intuitive timing. It's it, 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 you don't get this stuff overnight. Yeah. And the key to that is understanding your fears of failure or success. Mm. Now, most entrepreneurs, ironically, is fear of success. And I say that because we fail all the time. We miss out on opportunities, and blah, blah, blah. We're not afraid of failing because we're creative and we're, for, we're futurists. We think about something differently in the future. We're actually afraid of our own, as Mar uh, Marianne Williamson says, we're afraid of our own full potential. Mm. Yeah. So if we can understand, well, what am I afraid of? If I write that article in this really big reaching um, publication, what does my subconscious think the consequences will be? I did a, a video competition and I shared the um, recording of that video and I was trolled. Oh gosh. Yeah. And I have been preparing for my first troll for months and months, years, actually. <laughs> it's a sign of success. Right. I was going to say you've made it once you've been trolled. Right. So I already came in with that, but it didn't mean that I was careless about it. It's still kind of, stung but I did not allow myself to get stuck in it because the person one doesn't really know me even though she's like I met you once and you I knew you're full of bullshit and it's just like what the fuck are you talking about lady like your opinion she hadn't watched the video which was very clear by what she was saying second is like you actually don't know me and I'm not gonna hold back because everyone else all the other hundreds of comments were like far out that was amazing Mel that's going to impact me to make a change in my life. And that's why we do what we do, right? Is to make the impact. Uh-uh. Right. No. Yeah. No. I am not giving away my power because I've been successful with sharing something that is triggering for some people. Right. Even though it actually wasn't a triggering topic. She just took offense to something. Well, and if, you know, whatever it is that she's working on, you brought a light to something that she's working on within herself. Fantastic. You know, and, and you get to be some type of mirror for that, which I think is, is awesome. Um, and, love. And, love. and love, light and love, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So we've 
kind of gone through quite a lot in the short amount of time that we've had with you today. Um, how can people stay in touch with you? And I believe you also have a free gift for our audience. So I'd love for you to also share what that is, how they get it, and how can they continue to learn and grow more with what it is that you're doing. Awesome. So first I'll give you the website link, Mel B. So Mel with two L's, B, cannot, literally cannot make my URL any shorter, my website any shorter. It can only be four characters. Mel with two L's, B, dot com, forward slash resources. On that page at the top, there's a heap of stuff in there, but at the top, there are three resources for empaths. One, there's a quiz to see what level of empathic gifts and traits you have. There's the 10 traits that can identify, help you identify your sensitivity. So some labels that we're given. Thank you. I am overly sensitive. You can own your personalities, your traits, not your personality, but own your sense of self and your traits. And the third one um, is the explanation of the nine Claire gifts. Oh, good. And, okay. and examples of how they, they show up. So. Yeah. Yeah. Because we didn't get through all of them. And I'm sure auditory yeah. is probably one of them and so on and so forth. So that's good. Okay. So we go to the website again is um, melb with two L's dot com forward slash resources. And you can go ahead and, and pick up all three of those free gifts that you have to offer. Beautiful. Yep. And then I would assume also just melb.com. Um, they can connect with you on any of your other services or opportunities that are coming up. Yeah, I've got my social a page with all my contacts, all the socials. Good. So I have everything and other blogs I've been on and podcast interviews and all the stuff is there. Have a poke around. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, before we let you go, what is your takeaway or your memorable note that you would like to leave our audience with today? I think it's the, the message, the message that our messages, let me reframe that. It's the awareness that the messages we receive from our ultimate potential, our truth, the peace that wants us to be happy and awesome all the time their gentle suggestions and your imagination is the gateway between your logic and your inner wisdom your truth your highest self your imagination does not know the difference between truth and fake so you can tell it anything you can tell it all the lies in the world and it will believe you you can tell all the truths in the world and it will believe you so use your imagination to bridge between where you want to be emotionally and where your truth ultimate loving peaceful graceful self is it's there it's just been kind of layered over with all the other stuff use your imagine this is why visualization and meditation and affirmations that's how they work they kind of build the bridge between the gentle soft hey honey you said you wanted to do this it's a step towards it. Do you want to go in that way? No, no, I'm going to stay on this path. I know what's right for me. Okay. It's going to let you do that anyway. <laughs> I love this. Well, Mel, I appreciate you being with us here today. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank our listeners for joining us on another episode of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm super excited that you now have new lessons, new resources. So take what you learned here, start implementing it, go and grab Mel's resources on her page so that you can go ahead and create even more impact in your world. So until next time, have an outstanding rest of your day. Thank you so much for listening to the Creating Powerful Impact podcast. If you are a successful coach, speaker, author, or thought leader who would like to be on this program, simply visit creatingpowerfulimpact.com forward slash guest. If you are someone who got something out of this interview, would you please do me a favor and share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on your socials. 
Also, if you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag creating powerful impact. I love seeing all of your posts and great guest selections. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content to make sure you don't miss any episodes. Go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and they really mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more about us? Head on over to our website, graceandeaseproductions.com or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram. Just look for Grace and Ease Productions on your favorite platform. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.